Hey everybody, welcome to the Black Sheep Props channel. I'm Steve and I'm here to teach you the tips, tools, techniques, and materials for building your very own super cool EVA foam props. Now in our last build, we went sci-fi when we built the laser pistol from season one of Lost in Space. Um, and if you missed that build, we're gonna include the link in the description below to our channel's homepage. You can go over there and check out laser pistol or um, any of the other super cool builds we have there. Now for this build, we're going to go video game. So without further ado, Black Sheep Props would like to introduce you to the newest member of the family. <laughs> yeah, check it out. Woo, you know it, you love it. It's iconic. It is the Hunter Knife from Destiny. Wow, look at that with the finger holes, it fits perfectly. This thing is crazy awesome and crazy easy. Wow. Um, really, really simple. Got the shaped blade, the iconic shaped blade with this little cool skinny top part. It's tapered to a point all the way down. Got the little see-through, got the logo engraved in there. Got that cool grip with our taped handle. Um, this is one of those props where every once in a while we use a material other than foam. So we've got some real tape on here to give it that authentic look. And it fits perfectly either this way or through this way. Very nice. Um, all right, so in this episode, making an EVA foam hunter knife. We're going to go step by step through how to make it, um, seal it, and paint it, and wrap it. Uh, and if you want to build along with us, we have a template. So we'll include the link in the description below to our storefront. So you can go grab a template if you want. If not, that's cool. Just sit and check it out. Very nice. All right, man, if you're ready to hit it, let's make something. Okay, here's all the foam we're gonna be using for our hunter knife. Six millimeter, eight millimeter, and two two millimeter pieces, all right? So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna come in here with the eight millimeter piece and this wavy line here there's our template right there. Now that wavy line that's going right through the middle of our piece is where we're going to embed our steel rod, okay? Now we have a steel rod, it's like 3 sixteenths, I guess. Um, and we're gonna bend it to fit right in here. Okay, we're getting kind of close. Okay, we're in pretty good shape right here. Okay, there's our two ends right there and right there. Okay, now this is laying down flat all the way to here and all the way to here, but this little section is raised up a little bit, which is hard to prevent when you're bending, right? So we're gonna go lay this on the cement floor and we're gonna take our hammer and we're gonna tap this so that it lays flat. All right, there we go. Now it lays pretty darn close to flat. Let's bend it just a little bit. All right, that's not terrible. We're almost laying down flat there. All right now let's lay it down on here just to try and make sure that we are gonna fit in there the right way. That's not too bad. All right, now we're gonna come in and we are going to redraw our line just to make sure that we're exactly where we wanna be. Let's cut out our outer shape out of our template.
make sure, yes, that looks like we are staying safely away from our rod. That is. All right, let's rotate it just a little bit more. All right, now, to make sure we have this perfectly correct, let's flip it back over. We're going to transfer all of our cutouts right there. All right, now we can exactly position it. Now our Sharpie lines for dremeling our trench will not be confusing because we don't have multiple lines down now. We just have one good set. Okay, let's trim it off. Okay, there's one end. There we go. Okay, that is sweet. All right, that's probably the hardest part of our build is now finished. This will also give it a tiny little bit of weight. Okay. All right, we got our gloves on and our dust mask on. You know what we always say, don't be a dumb dumb. Do not dremel and throw foam dust and breathe it up your nose. So wear a dust mask. cool. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to make it just a little bit deeper. Wow, pretty nice. Okay, now we're going to come in with our six millimeter piece and we're going to do the same thing. Okay, now we're going to stick this down, submerging our metal rod right in the middle. All right, there we go. Now, you know the drill with contact cement. Coat both sides, let them both dry completely, then it can make contact. Let's get our metal rod inside our trench like that. All right. Now we're gonna come in and we're gonna line up our, our edges. Okay. There we go. All right, there we go, that is solid. All right, now we're gonna come back in and we're gonna trace our, our template for cutting. Oops, actually. Okay, now we're gonna come in with these two millimeter pieces and we're gonna cut these little designs out of the center. Carefully cut out our little logo here. So now we're going to stick this down, just like that. All right, beautiful. Let's let both of these dry, then we'll line them up. 
Okay, now we are going to line up down here at the corner and at the bottom, right there. And we're not going to stretch it. We want to be very careful not to stretch. Okay, there we go. There we go. Nice. We wanted that cool little recessed logo right there. Nice. All right, now we're going to do the other side. Okay, there we go. That is a nice, sturdy wedge right there. All right, now let's come back in like this. Let's transfer our line over. All right, there we go. Now we know we're going to be pretty safe because our metal bar is way on the inside of our piece. All right, so now we're going to go over to the band saw and the scroll saw and we're going to cut this out. All right, there we go, that is sweet. Now we're gonna cut these three circles out on our drill press, so let's get the right size bit. Okay, now we've got our support piece for underneath. We're gonna slide this in. Beautiful, that is perfect. All right, let's keep the same bit in. Now let's do this spot here. All right. Okay, now we're gonna take this bit out and go one size larger for the other hole. Check that out. That's pretty cool, man. Wow. All right. Now, I've got some rough spots on here from the bandsaw, but we're going to start shaping now. All right. We are in really good shape here. So, we're going to transfer a couple more lines around. We're going to be tapering our blade up here and right here, and we're going to be softly rounding all the edges, all right? So we're going to get our dust mask on and our Dremel. Okay, what we're going to do first is we're just going to do the handle. So we're going to round off the handle. Got a smoothed off edge. Let's clean up in here a little bit. All 
Okay, now we're gonna do the inside of these three holes. We drew a line here, because that's how far we want to bevel. Here we just want to round it off. We've got our two little beveled edges there, softened edges here. Okay, now we're gonna start shaping the blade. Okay, so let's draw a line right down the center. Actually. All right, there we go. Right down the center. Now we're gonna do the same thing up here at the top. Okay, here we go. Now we've got this line drawn on both sides, and we've got this line drawn on both these sides, and we've got our center marks. Okay, so now we're going to bevel from this line right up to that center peak right there. Okay, now what we can probably do here at the front is we're going to come up to the front, and we'll just like that. And just like that. Okay, now we've got a pointed blade. Now we can start shaping. And we're gonna slice off our corner with our box cutter, just to save us some Dremel time. Take your time. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing back here. Okay, now it's time to start shaping. All right, there we go. We dremeled from our sideline up to our peak. Now we're gonna spin around and we're gonna do the same thing on this side. We're gonna go from this line up to the peak, making a point there. Oh man, that is a sweet taper blade right there. Wow, really cool. All right, we kept a pretty good tip on there. Let's use our X-Acto knife and let's cut a little bit of that fringe off right there. All right, now let's start to shape in here a little bit. It's gonna be tough around here, but let's try it. All right, now we're gonna put our smooth bit back on. We're gonna start cleaning it up and we're gonna get in here. All right, there we go. That is shaped and fabulous. Wow, that is really cool. Now this is a little bit flimsy right here, but we're gonna do a little trick on here uh, in a little bit to show you how to keep that from being so flimsy. All right, let's see, what are we gonna do now? Let's come in with our 220 sanding stick and let's clean this blade up. All right, let's take a break. Let's clean this mess up. 
Okay, now we made our three little marks right here on both sides. We're going to take our slightly wider Dremel bit and we're going to make a rivet on both sides. Okay, now we're going to come in with a sharpened brass tube and we're going to try to make a little crease. There we go. All right, now we're going to come in with our heat gun. Okay, since we did all the shaping, we're going to tighten up the foam and it's going to gloss it over and it's going to hopefully make these little creases open up a little bit. Alright, sweet. Check that out. Not bad. Simple little rivet back here on both sides, and then we just made a little crease with our brass tube and then opened up the crease with some heat. Nice. Alright. Okay, now this is a little bit flimsy. We could leave it alone and do nothing to it, or we could do a little trick that we've learned and that we used in the past on other builds. We're going to come in with our super glue. And we're going to put it all over the back of this piece, okay? And then we're going to come in and we're going to kind of paint it. Okay, there we go. We went ahead and we coated the bottom of it. Now let's go ahead and let's coat some of the top of it. Okay, get it completely coated. All right, there we go. We've got some of this top part painted and we've got the bottom part all painted with super glue. Now the reason we did that is when that dries, it's gonna make that foam stiffer because when super glue dries on foam, it almost gives it like a little bit of a shell, a little bit of a hard shell. So that should be just enough to stiffen up this little piece right here. So let's just leave it alone and let it dry. All right, there we go. Definitely stiffer. Wow, very cool. We could have left it alone. It's not a big deal, but whenever we have kind of a really thin piece of foam and you can't get support inside of it, um, we like to hit it with some super glue. Look at that, that's a lot stiffer. Very nice. All right, there we go. So with that last detail, um, stiffening up this little loose piece of foam right here with some super glue paint, um, that brings the build portion of our hunter's knife to a close. All right, here we are at the spray stand. We're gonna begin coating our hunter knife with our Plastidip. And you know what we always say, even if you're outside in a well-ventilated area, do not spray without your respirator. All right, there we go. Our hunter knife is coated with Plastidip. Looking pretty darn good. We're gonna hang it up. We're gonna let it dry, and then we're gonna do a really easy paint job. 
Okay, we're out of the spray stand. We're gonna begin coating our hunter's knife with our satin nickel. Okay, there we go. We've got the whole thing coated with our satin nickel. Not bad. Now we held right here when we were spraying, which doesn't matter because this part's gonna be covered, so you're not even gonna see the silver there. All right, so there we go. Let's hang it up. We're gonna let it dry all the way through. Before we... Our silver was a little bit too shiny for us. It was the right color, but it was just a little bit too shiny, so we went outside and we hit it with our matte finish spray and that just dulled it down a little bit while keeping the same color. All right. Okay, now we're gonna come in with our medium gray. Now we're gonna do a bunch of hand work here. All right, we've got this pattern right here where the, our gray graphics are going to need to go. So we're gonna to have to try to eyeball it. All right, now we're gonna probably let it dry and then we'll probably come in and do another coat over it just so we can get rid of some of the, some of the brush marks. Okay, now what we did is we flipped this over and transferred our pattern to that side. So now we can come over and do the exact same thing over here. All right, there we go, both sides. Got two coats on there. Now it doesn't have to be perfect perfect because we're going to be adding a little bit of weathering to this thing so that looks pretty good. Okay here we go. Now we're going to come in and we're going to make a mud wash. Alright we're going to dirty this thing up so we're going to come in with some with some brown and then we're going to come in with a little bit of black and we're going to get just a little bit of water in here. Not a lot. We're making some mud. All right now let's let the water drain out of it. Now we got it covered on our brush. Now we're gonna get the whole thing painted, a little bit scary. All right, there we go. Now we're gonna get our paper towel and we're gonna, we're gonna wipe right off. Now the reason we're not dabbing like we usually do or wiping is we want these directional lines in here. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. There we go. We've got some light crud across there and it's collecting in some of the little areas. And we'll get our handle done. All right, that's got a nice layer of 
of grime on it everywhere. That's pretty nice. And we've got a little bit collecting in some of these little recesses. And then what you can do too is if you want is you can come in and you can just add That looks good. Very nice. All right. Perfect. All right, now we're going to come in with this friction tape. It's a cloth tape, and uh, we're going to want to cut in thin strips to wrap our handle. Okay, what we did is we wrapped it around our bolt cutters because they're really heavy because we want to be able to split right down the middle of our tape. Stretch that out. We've got our tape stretched really taut so we can come right through the middle. This is tough because this tape is really sticky. All right, there we go. Now we've got two pieces. Start it right here. Now this is going to be tough because like I said, this tape is very sticky. We want to wrap it really tight. Okay, there we go. Beautiful. And then we're going to do it in sections. All right, now we wrap another piece off of two heavy objects to keep our tape kind of tight because it's really sticky. It's tough to, this tape's kind of tough to work with. So you don't want to be touching it if you don't have to. So we got it weighted down with two objects. All right, there we go, just like that. All right, there we go. That is pretty cool. Okay, now we're gonna get a piece of paper towel and some sterling silver. Put just a little puddle down there. We're gonna tap it in one time, then we're gonna wipe most of it off. Okay, then we're gonna come into here and we're gonna do some light dragging. Just like that. We hit on the corners and then we just streak it a little bit. All right. That looks pretty good. Really subtle, but just enough to give us a little bit of wear on the tape. All right, there we go, all set. Perfect, love it. All right, you saw how easy that paint job was. We sprayed it with our satin nickel. The color was perfect, but it was a little bit too shiny, so we came in with our matte spray and dusted it just to tone down the shine. And uh, real easy stuff. We came in by hand with our medium gray and we brushed on our 
pattern on both sides. And then we came in with some brown and black mud wash and coated the blade just to get it dirty. Some streaky dirtiness and some dirt collecting in the crevices. Just enough to give it a little bit of a weathered look. And then we came in with our friction tape, which was nice because it's a, uh, a cloth tape. And we wrapped it around and uh, then came in with an acid brush and some silver and dry brushed it just to get on some little silver highlights on the edges and across the tape in a few spots just to start to give it a little bit of a weathered look. Wow, really cool. All right, pretty nice stuff and easy too. So with that last, uh, look at that, really nice. Loving this thing, man, really, really cool. All right, so with that last detail, using our acid brush and dry brushing some silver highlights on some of the edges of the wrap there, that brings our Destiny Hunter's Knife to a close. Totally easy. Easy build, easy paint job. You saw how we embedded our rod for stability so it's nice and stiff. Uh, you saw our beveling we did with our Dremel to get our taper blade. Um, and then you saw a couple small little details with the Dremel and with a brass pipe just to get to look like some rivets on there. And then we wrapped it with some uh, friction tape, which is cloth tape and it's really sticky. It's pretty good. Um, there's really not any residue on it. It's pretty darn nice. And uh, we wrapped it. And then we came in with our mud wash and brown and black and we kind of dirtied up the blade just to add a little age to it, get some kind of grime in the crevices and stuff. And then we came in with our acid brush and a little bit of silver and we hit the edges of our handle just to give it that kind of like a little bit of a sweat worn sort of a look. Very cool, man, very cool. This thing fits perfectly in your hand. It is totally radical. Um, all right, that pretty much concludes. Making an EVA foam hunter knife. Hope you liked it. If you did, give us a like, share us with a friend, and subscribe to this channel. And together we're going to go step by step through a lot more super cool builds so that you get the props you deserve. Love it. Thanks for coming. See you next time.